told you the story of Ivan the Elder, and I mentioned there was an Ivan the Younger. Yes, this is Ivan the Younger's story. Uh, Ivan the Younger had left his homeland, married a princess, became a prince of the Rus. Now, the Rus are a very warlike tribe. And so, Ivan the Younger spent most of his time either fighting a war or preparing for the next war. Happened a lot. One day, he is riding back from one of his practices at arms with his troops. And there at his castle gate, he saw his two guardsmen talking with an old man with a long white hair and white beard. And as he rode up, he asked, what, what is going on here? And the old man turned to him and looked up and said, ah, your majesty, I am but a poor wanderer, but I have been gifted with the gift of prophecy. And here is my offer. If you will give me some food and a warm place to sleep for the night, you may ask me one question about your future, and I will give you an honest answer. Now, Ivan had heard of such men, so he said, very well, and he ordered his guards to escort this man into the castle, give him food, and when he had been made comfortable, bring him to, to, my, uh, to my study. And Ivan sat back in his chair that evening, and he thought to himself, I have one question. What would I ask? And this is an intriguing thing. I mean, think about it. What, what would you ask? Well, when at last the man was brought into his presence, Ivan said, very well, I have determined my question. How will I die? And the old man leaned back and closed his eyes for a moment. And when he looked over at Ivan, he says, ah, I see. You will not die in battle, my king, nor will you die in old age. Nor will it be disease that takes you. What will kill you is a horse. That very one I saw you perched upon when we first spoke today. That is how you will die. And Ivan nodded and dismissed the man. And now he began to think deeply. His first instinct, of course, was to order the, house, the horse to be taken away and killed. But then it occurred to him that the Rus, besides being a warlike people, have a great respect for horses. And to have such a healthy animal killed for apparently no reason could cause rumors to start flying, perhaps questioning his judgment and even his sanity. Now this would not do. So after some thought, he summoned to him his master of horse. And the man came in and said, Your Majesty. And Gilder says, that animal I was riding on today he has served me well for a number of years, but he has become obstreperous. He no longer obeys my commands with, with the speed that he used to. I think it is time to, to put him out to pasture. I would have you take him far up to the north, put, put him in, in one of our corrals and one of our pastures where he can spend his days uh, grazing and living in peace. And the master of horse went away to do this. And Ivan forget, forgot about it completely, for another war was brewing, <clears throat> was brewing. And very soon, he led his men south to make war upon the Greeks. For three years, he was away at war. And during this time, he thought very little of, of this pronouncement. When he got back, of course, there was a mound of, of issues to be taken care of. And, when at last the master of horse came before him to report on what had gone on in the previous years, the birth, the death, the, the addition to his stables, just as the man was about to leave, Ivan suddenly remembered and said, wait a moment, do you remember that horse that I told you to take, take to the north? Um, what, whatever happened to that? And his master shrugged and says, well, your majesty, I'm not quite sure. The last two winters have been extremely cold and severe. Uh, my guess is he's probably dead by now. Is it important? And Ivan said, I suppose not, and dismissed the man. 
But that night, he spent all night laying in bed thinking about it, and the more he thought, the more curious he became. And finally, by dawn, he decided, I, I have to know, I have to find out. And so he got on his new horse, and he rode far to the north, where the pens and stables for retired horses were kept. And he had been told where this horse had been put to pasture. And as he rode along the fence, looking out over the grassy field, at first he saw nothing. But then, out in the middle, he saw a pile of white bones. And he stopped, and he dismounted, and he climbed over the fence, and he walked up to this pile of bones, and certainly, yes, this was the remains of his horse. And he looked down for a moment, and then he looked up to the sky and said, Oh, you cruel fates, you see? I have defeated you. This animal that you said would be my death is now dead at my feet, and I am still alive. Perhaps now I will live forever. And to emphasize this, he, with the toe of his boot, kicked the skull of the horse. And from beneath the skull there came a serpent, and angry at being disturbed, that serpent rose up and sank its fangs into his leg just above the knee. Now, Ivan at once draw his sword and cut the, the serpent in twain, but it was too late. And as he staggered backwards, he could feel the poison seeping up through his leg, through his groin, through his bowels, reaching upward for his heart. And he took only a few steps backward before the sword dropped from his hand, and a moment later, Ivan the Younger fell dead beside it. And now from this tale, we learn two very important moral truths. The first being that the pronouncement of the fates may be predicted. It may even be avoided for a time. But in the end, it cannot be avoided forever. And the fates certainly will not stand to be mocked. And the second most equally important moral is, no good thing shall ever come from beating a dead horse. Thank you, I, I shall go and hide now.